Hey guys, welcome to Farming Simulator Platinum DLC. Class. Everyone's referring to it as the Class DLC. We are here. We have got everything on deck, spread around the map to take a look at, to see working, and to have a fairly in-depth look-see. This video is probably going to be lengthy. I have no apologies for that. Uh, this is something that I've always proud myself of doing some detailed stuff, looking at the nitty gritty, calling this stuff as I see it. If there's stuff that I think is a little funky, I'll say. If not, if not. Straight up by saying, in the description down below is a affiliate link to get the class DLC, Platinum DLC, from Giants. I get a little bit of a kickback, helps me out, helps Giants out, if so wish. Links in the description down below. So, we'll start off with the tractor lineup. Pretty much their full lineup, minus the orchard tractors. All the way from the 4000, or the 4000, geez, the 400 series, all the way through to the Zerion. And a massive, absolute massive lineup. And over here, we have the front loader, wheel loaders set up here, and including the Scorpion, which I never realized the reach on that thing. It's huge. Over here, we have the Lexion. Ready and waiting in the field. The 8900. Beautiful 3D tracks. Love the fact that they've started to do this. Hopefully, we'll see a lot more of that. With the Toucan over there. Over in that field, we've got the Jaguar. Over there, we've got the the Terra Track Jaguar. And we're, we're spread out, but we've got everything set up. We've got the cargo here, or the cargo trailers, the uh, forage, the mowers. So, without further ado, let's start off with the baby, the 400. So, straight off the hop, the detail in the class pack is absolutely phenomenal. It truly is. Just the detail they've gone, you can see I've got the rear weight on there. I say the rear weight, the front weight that is included in the pack. But all of the detail. Now, I will straight up ask you guys this. What in earth is that silver looking thing right here? It's obviously a tank of some sort. My guess is like washer fluid. But what's the pipes in it for? That obviously have got holes going through the side. It's almost like it's, like it's a damn flagpole holder. What are they for? I'm kind of curious. So this tractor has some pretty cool uh, configurations. We'll uh, jump on board. So you guys can look at the interior. It is a very stripped down basic one. Something that I didn't notice but Simulate told me about. The cup holder. It's even got the included ashtray. <laughs> the detail. But you see it's their basic one. We have the Pamaronic cab on it. For our front loader work. So you can see the front loader there. The FL120C. Which is pretty cool. I never realised this. Actually uh, has the proper hosepipe hookups and everything. They, they really have stepped up the game with the detail on this one. Stuff that you would expect to have seen before, but didn't. All of the pipes all over the damn thing, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy indeed. So now we've seen this here. We'll uh, look at it in the store and go through the configs on it. Alrighty, so here it is in the store, the 410 to 460 with its normal cab. So you can see the standard looking cab there and the panoramic. So you can see what it does. Basically adds a window up in there, lifts the cab up slightly higher from looking between the two there. You can even see the shadow that it, the cab casts disappear as it lights it up. And that's about the only change as far as that goes. Tire configs, you can do the trial bugs, knock-ins, and now, under a troll bug, you can go standard tyre, wheel weights, wide tyres, wide with weights, row crops. 
and then a narrow dual on the rear, and then back to your standard. So it starts off with 90 horsepower and goes all the way through 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, back down. Obviously the design you've seen, and the front loader attachment there. And I don't think it adds the joystick in-game, because I believe it just uses the, that one there in the cab. From what I've been able to see from going between the two. It is a custom, if you like, custom uh, front loader bracket. It's not the ones that we've already had in-game, so that is all new as well. And that is the 400. So uh, we'll go to the next one. Which is, of course, it's covered. What was it 600? I believe. Yeah, the 600. So again, very much just a bit bigger, really. They're all very much the same. Now, I will say this. I don't know what it is. Again, transparency here. This is stock map. This is Falzburn. I don't know what damn tractor it is, but they're sliding. I really have no idea which one it is, but you can see I, this may be the culprit. These were all lined up perfectly when I started the video. And throughout this video, we'll come back and check in, but it's going to be messed up. Although, I say come back and check in, we're going to end up driving them at some point. Alright, into... Well, actually, wow. I just noticed there, even more detail. You can see the cab suspension. The uh, spring. This has the other rear weight. So both of the front weights, you can add weight to. So it goes from being a standard 900 kilo or a 600 kilo... This one can go up to 1,200 kilos, so it adds another 600. This one adds another 600 kilo. So I think it's uh, around the same. All said and done. Actually, some more detail. I just noticed the diagram for the hydraulic hookups by the looks of things there. You can see the springs there for the suspension on the cab. A lot of detail. A lot of relatively high resolution detail, actually. Uh, to be fair. So this one will pull forward, I think. So we'll start this up. And there's something to be said about most of the sounds in the pack. Most of them, to me, I've not heard before. There is one exception, which I am very, very disappointed about that. I've also said my disappointment with it during the fact sheets. And... Uh, We'll get to that later. So it shut it down. Yeah, you can see the spring there. Even some of the engine you can see through the grates. Yeah, it's unbelievable detail in it. She's even the warning on the starter motor down there. And you have your uh, defrost lines going across, which are very, very pronounced indeed. It's the first time I've ever seen those on a tractor. I don't know if they're particularly commonplace. Definitely kind of screws with your visibility a little. But very nicely laid out cab, very detailed. Fire it back up. Custom horn, this is the first time I've ever heard that one. You can actually see the springs move there. Line this back up. Shut it down. And jump off of this. Should have done the 400 series sounds, but here we go. So just a demonstration of the sound, and now we'll shut down. Again, another sound that I've not heard before. The 830. Now, the 830 has been a mod that's floated around Farming Simulator for quite some time now, actually. By... I want to say Smitty, I'm not too sure, so... We, most of us know what this thing looks like. But this is... Very detailed. So again, I'll pull it forward. Once the lineup is getting kind of tight here, where they've shuffled around.
Actually, I'll fire it back up again so you guys can see the lights. The cab feels very familiar from the mod, honestly. See how the dials are working there. I wish you could zoom in on them to get a better look, see, but you can see they're moving. Obviously, all the lights function, that's it's a given. Put the hazards on so you can see that. Shut it down. So much. I, I'm still actually, now I'm looking at these in detail. It's taken me over an hour to get all of this set up, but now I'm looking at this in detail. Water separator there. It's pretty, pretty phenomenal, actually. <laughs> Branded. Top link there. And even data plate. So much detail all over the machine. And there's probably details that I'm going to miss, and I would say most people are. There's usually hidden detail, which you just don't see. And we'll move on to... I think it's the 600 that is moving. Move on to the 9. Which is just a bigger version of what we just had. We are, have lost the lines in the rear window there. Or the defrost. You can hear a lot more throatier sound. I'll shut it down and start it again so you guys can hear it. A lot more bassier sound. It's, it's a big, powerful tractor. You can pretty much see most of the engine in there, which is kind of cool. I'll run all the lights. Interior, very similar to the last tractor we were in. Screen's a bit bigger. Very for sort of a familiar the way it looks. We'll back it up. squared away that. Shut it down. Move on to the one I think a lot of people are interested in. This area. Detail on this thing is again pretty good. I would say not as much detail front end wise as the others but doesn't need to be because there isn't. It does have four wheel steer so you can see the knuckles on the back axles there. Now if we can climb up here and just look at the connections here for the cab. Of course this has a very interesting mechanism where the cab lifts up, rotates, turns around and settles down here. That's what these locating pegs are for there for it to lock in. It also has a gooseneck ball right here. Now most people would have seen it by now I would imagine months ago there was, I believe it was a Samson gooseneck slurry tank leaked. It was up on a 3D modeling website that seemed to make or people on there freelance and make a lot of stuff for giants. It's one of the modders, or modelers, should I say because they're not modders, they are the modelers for giants at times. Put it up there way too early. I was anticipating we could have seen it snuck into the pack. We have not, so I don't know if it's going to be a mod later down the line or whether it was actually for FS21. Who knows? But uh, Silver News did a video on that. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. But the detail and the, all the hoses visible and all of that for the systems is just crazy. And of course that all winds down and goes into the belly of the beast down on the bottom there. So we'll jump into the cab of this one. Wrong one. That's the downside of having them all parked so close. Now this has four wheel steer, front wheel steer, rear wheel steer for when the cabs are rotated around, your crab steering, and then back to four. 
all of the lights. The interior, the RPM, dash, or the speed, fuel, air pressure, but obviously they don't function. Fuel gauge, which actually doesn't look like it's functioning. Pretty, pretty complex cab as far as the computers in there, but compared to the rest that we've seen, fairly plain. Fairly plain indeed. AC system up there. Not much to be had. So we'll uh, lift the cab up and give that a rotate for you guys. And now uh, we're facing this way. I'm just driving it like normal, basically. Just facing the wrong, <laughs> wrong way around. So I'll uh, turn it around when we're looking inside the cab. Now when that's going on, you can move the camera around, but from what I've been able to tell, it has had some judderiness at times. So, I know I did it at the beginning of that, but we'll go over the configs of all of, them, all of the tractors now, minus the 400 series. Okay, starting off with the 600. So, fairly common setup you've got here. You can have the Trollbergs, Michelin, Nokians... And the Mitus. And I think for the most part they've all got the same specs. So that will just rinse through and you guys can keep an eye on them. There. It does have kind of a lean back when it's on the standard tyre. Until you go with the high profile which levels it off. It looks <laughs> ten times better. And of course you go from the 600, that is 145 horse, 167, or 165, sorry, 160, jeez, I can't talk, 185, and the 205, which will be the top of the 600 series. And then that's the first one you can put the big, bigger front loader on there, and that's the config of the 600. So we'll back out of that and move straight on seamlessly to the 800. So, start off with the Trollbergs, Michelins, Mitus, and again, pretty much wheel weights, twins, your standard affair for all of them, but I'll go through them with full transparency. And then you start off with the 800, which is 205 horsepower, 215, 235, 250, 264, 295, and that is the top of the... Uh, Line on the 800, and that's the 870, 850, 840, 830, 810, 800. The whole entire lineup on that series. I believe. I could be wrong, but I, I believe. I'm no expert on these. All right, the 900. So the 920 all the way to the 960. Same affair with the tyres, Trollbergs, Michelin, Midas. You guys know the drill at this point. It's basically the same configs throughout all of them. And then you might as well. Though. And then you start this tractor off with the 325, 355, 385, 410, 445. And that was the top of the line. So, pretty big horsepower tractor. 400 odd well, 400 odd. Almost 450 horse. Probably boost to 450. IRL. And then the Zerion. Now we have an interesting flip on the Zerion there. When it is with the 4000, which is 435 horsepower, it has a smaller nose. As soon as it goes to the 4, or the 4500, bam! Gets punched in the nose, and it becomes bigger. So the whole bonnet, hood area, whatever you want to call it, does increase. The radiators and all that increase, probably because it's a bigger engine it needs more cooling. Which is interesting. It's a neat feature, the fact they've done that. I say a feature because it's the first time I've seen any of them do that, including the modded versions. Never have done that. Granted, I think the modded versions have always been the, the uh, 4,500 to the 5,000. 
gives off well more power. So tire options kind of gets interesting with this one. Trowbug, Michelin, uh, Midas. So you can have your standard, your wides, which just well that's how you will see them typically. Twins and narrows. Not sure why, but you can have narrows with a big tractor like this. Makes me think there's stuff coming out for this thing. This tractor is such a unique tractor that can do so much. I hope we do have some of his stuff. And then twin narrows, and then back to your standard. Unless that's kind of bridging the American Zerion feel. I don't know, but of course, if that's the case, lose these. Lose the warning markers. Alright, Michelin's are the same all the way through. Got your narrows, dual narrows. Same there. Cool tractor. I do like this thing. And that is our tractor lineup. So we'll come out of all of this. And as we are stood here, we'll look at our wheel loaders and front loader setup. Right here. So we've got the Torian 600, the Torian 900, and, well, the Torian, <laughs> the big one. The, uh, basically, it is a Liebherr branded as a class for agricultural use. So to start off with the baby. What I believe, custom sounds. Switch on all the lights for you, I think that's everything. Beacon. Pretty neat little machine, this one. I think this holds, or well, is able to have the front loader attachments. And inside the cab, And of course, brake pedal and all that stuff works. Accelerator, joystick, which you can see there. All of that good stuff. So the little Torium. Nice little machine. Again, the detail. These you can see a bit better on the detail. As, well, the axles are just bare. The data plate, let's zoom in on that and have a look see at that. Gets a little pixelated, but it's a small detail. It doesn't really matter. Hoses underneath it. Radiator packages there. The hookup for the hitches. I don't know what type of hitch style it is, whether it's a high hitch or low hitch. Yes, it does have an effect there of what trailers it can pick up. Alright, now we'll go on to the slightly bigger Tor wrong one, jeez. Torin, right here. And we'll fire it up. Now this one we're going to actually take on an extended drive because it's got some weird sound things going on with it. It does sound good though. It really does sound good. And this also, when it's at full lock, does have rear steering so it can actually turn relatively tight. So the sound I'm hearing, when we get going at a good speed, it almost sounds like when they recorded the real sounds of this thing, they start going over bumps and it's almost like you hear air suspension knocking, is what it sounds like to me. Right there. Like you hear the hydraulic whine or the hydrostat wind up and then it's some low thumping. It's not a bad noise. I don't like it. I don't, it's not like I, I say I don't like that. It's not like I don't like the sound. I like the sound. It's just interesting. But I like this machine. I can see a lot of people using this. This is this one takes wheel loader attachments. That I do remember. So we'll park this up. Actually, we'll pull it back so we can have a little bit more detail. All the lights there. And inside. Now the dash does work there. You can see the speed increase, or the RPM increase. In. It does have a camera. Camera obviously taken from Falzbin, I think, by the looks of things. And as far as detail goes, 
No, I'm not even going to say it. So on the rear hitch, we've got actually hydraulic hookups, which is very interesting. I'm not too sure what they'd be used for. Uh, airline hookups, obviously electrical for trailers. Radiator package tucks in there at an interesting angle for air intake. An important thing about the diesel, by the looks of things, it's probably going to be in German. No, that's actually in English. Wow. Ultra low sofa diesel. There you go. Now you know. Data plate on. That's a Leaper! <laughs> no way! These are rebranded Leapers, too. Wow! I am I am actually kind of impressed they included that. I guess we have the Leaper brand, so. And it looks like we have a Data Tag I spy back in here. Again, Leaper. Ha! Huh. Kind of like a little Easter egg, that, but these are rebranded Leapers, by the looks of things. Or as the Farm Sim community loves to say, it's just a reskin! Park this up. Now, with great disappointment, I say this. I will probably include a sound clip of what the real one sounds of these. Throughout everything so far, I've been praising the sound quality. The Torian sound quality, though, is the worst thing I have actually heard of. Not just in this pack, full stop. How this has slipped through the cracks is beyond me. Every Torian video I have heard on YouTube doesn't sound anything like this. I have never heard this machine in person, but I'm pretty sure a machine that probably weighs the best part of almost 20 ton doesn't sound like it is rocking around with a little four-cylinder diesel. Probably from the 80s. So, uh... The external model looks fantastic, but we'll fire it up. The real one doesn't sound like this. The real one sounds very deep and throaty, kind of like the class over there. Now, any of you that saw my fact sheet video, I said it doesn't sound good at all. I messaged Lithian about it. At the time, he may have been away from the office, he didn't see the video. Uh, I sent him the link that they sent me straight to their own video so he could listen to it. I don't know what come of it. Maybe this is a placeholder. Maybe there's going to be a day one patch. I don't know, but I'm going to call them out on this one. Out of the whole entire pack, from what I've experienced, this thing sounds awful. It sounds nothing like the real counterpart. If they needed an extra sound, the New Holland, the stocking game, would have sounded better than this. And this is really the only massive negative, uh, negativity, negative thing I will say about the pack. This thing just sounds horrific. It doesn't sound like the real ones. Like, everything else sounds legit. This doesn't. So I'm not even going to care about the shutdown sound. I just hope they address it. But it's been pulled out. Let's have a look at the detail. The detail on it's phenomenal. It really is. Now, I do have access to the pre-order bonus, so the test mule as well. I'm going to cover them at the end because not everyone will get them. Let's be honest to them. They will surface relatively quick after the DLC drops. So some small details that I noticed, which kind of caught my eye. The hubs. They, they, they're they small, but it's a hub that I didn't recognize. It's actually a ZF hub, which is ZF axles, presumably. I've heard of, the, heard of that in the past. I don't know where from, but it's a cool little thing they've included there. And it looks like you've got fill level for... Hydraulic oil or uh, trans. Going around, even up on that, you've got the heated defroster. The radiator, hydraulic cooler packages there. The hitch hookup. As we come around here, some more warnings of stuff. Maybe good old Def, AdBlue. Everybody's favorite crap. <laughs> Class data plate instead of a leap error, but, which is interesting because these are a leap error. We'll go inside the cab. And we'll fire it up so you can see the 
the dash there. That does move. Pull the lights. Of the, it does light up in here. Joystick. Brake. Well, accelerator brake. See, so it goes up and down. I just can't get past the sound. I'll be interested to see your guys' opinion on the sound. I do question what happened there. I really do. Now we'll shut it down. So we don't have to hear it. Now I will go over the wheel loader stuff, front loaders, in the uh, store. Alrighty, starting off with the small Torian, the 639. Very basic config. Tires. Doors. On the front. And no doors. That is the end of the small Torian. Uh, like I said, I believe this has, uh, can hold the wheel loader stuff. If we move back out of here, it should say... Yeah, front loaders. So this one uses the front loaders. Uh, the Torian 956. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sinas? I don't know. Screw it. <laughs> That's wheel loader attachments. So we'll jump into that. And again, as far as configs go, uh, Trollbergs, Nokians, and standard. With this one, though, for me being in Canada, North America, this size of wheel loader is used very often for snow clearing. If someone makes a snow plow for this thing, that would be kind of cool. Especially with it, how small of a steering radius it is. Of course, we're talking for seasons, but there you go. I think this thing will be pretty damn slick. I think I'll end up using this quite a bit. This one, personally. Uh, I'm drawn to this one. Let's get the Scorpion for now and go over to the big Torian, the Torian 1914. Uh, very much the same as config-wise as the stocking game wheel loaders. Midas tires... Michelin's, Nokian's, it just doesn't seem right. It looks weird. Uh, back to your Trollbergs, which seem higher. Uh, what's the profile on those? These are... Uh, 175s? And then you go down to 65, so... Definitely not as tall, but they look... Better for doing silage operations, but with the sounds of this thing, I just can't bring myself to do it, personally. And that is the Torium. The uh, well, Torium lineup, let's say. Now we'll check out the Scorpion, which I think a lot of people are looking forward to this thing. The Scorpion. Got a bit more room around it, so we won't need to pull it out right away. Uh, you got a front hitch up there. That i got to admit, I haven't tested to see if that works. Presumably it does. Uh, what looks to be a automatic... Grease setup. More lights. Uh, more lights. Jeez, uh, more hookups. Hydraulic hookups. Air hookup. Electrical hookup. Go back up like there and a mirror, which more than likely works, so you just can't see it from in game. Or from in cab. Not in game. Uh, the engine radiators and all that stuff. It looks like. The front axle does have some sort of movement on it, which is usually just the rears, I think. Which is kind of cool. Alright, we'll jump inside. And it is a nice, detailed cab. It really is. Good visibility. You can see all the way up to where the boom is. It's, the reach on this thing's phenomenal. Looks like it's LED lighting all around. Not that it matters for in-game, because, well, it's in-game. We'll fire this thing up. You can see the radio behind the steering wheel, they can't actually see it, but there you go. Yeah. Dash does work there. The joystick. Air gauge down there, so it's, that's definitely a Euro one. Ooh. Show folding this down. It is such a long reach. Kind of reminds me of the Lodals, honestly. I'll pull the boom down. As far as steering goes. Four wheel steer, front wheel steer for road travel, crab, left and right, and then back. And then we'll switch on all of the lights, put the hazards on for you, shut that down. The, the lighting package on this thing is just, yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Switch all of that off, and see the boom. 
not much to really take note of the boom, just it's on godly length. Uh, the sounds on the Scorpion, I don't know if these are custom or not, well, or whether they're already in game sounds. I got a feeling they're more than likely custom. I really do. But time will tell. One thing I have noticed, it could just be me, it seems the tire dirt on these look better. Not unless it's something they did in 1.5. But the tire dirt does look better. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Well, that is a scorpion. We'll uh, fire this up in the store. I'll just do it like this because it should be already there. There it is. So, Traubug. Knockins. That's your options. And then you've got your wide tires or standard. White just fills it out better, looks better. And then uh, commercial. Nothing to change about there. But that's the uh, config for the scorpion. Alrighty. Next, we will move on to.